Hi everyone, welcome into Siren Records Monterey. It's Fresh Catch Friday, and uh, if you're new here to the channel, this is where we just talk about some of the new releases, reissues, represses, things like that that just came out on vinyl. So if you love vinyl like we do and you wanna hear about some of the new stuff, um, I would suggest that you hit that subscribe button and every Friday we do this and um, yeah, uh, give us a thumbs up, a comment. We love to hear from you. Uh, anyway, I start with picks of the week and I post the list down below in the comments of prices and it all goes alphabetically. So if you can follow along, if it's uh, running a little too long for you here and you wanna skip through and just hear about the uh, releases that you wanna hear about, you can certainly feel free to do that. But let's get started with two pretty strong, good picks of the week. My first pick for you is Death Cab for Cutie. It's called Asphalt Meadows. This is the, um, it's on Bars Barsic records label and it's the 10th full-length studio album from death cab for cutie and their predecessor in 2018 was called thank you for today it was kind of dismissed as being a little bit of a a little too beige but anyway here you'll be happy to know that their return has much more fire in its belly and its back and ready and uh you know characteristically like your textbook death cab uh, albums are they have very shimmering guitars, very stomping percussion, decadent choruses, um, they, uh, very nostalgic kind of lyrics. Then this is a return to form for that. They are knack for like very spry, melancholic indie rock. It remains um, unrivaled and it just makes yet another memorable release here. So uh, Ben Gibbard's ability to get under your skin of the minutia of human interaction as uh, from it's been there from the beginning and it has uh, not only endured but become more acute as the world has changed and humans have uh, reacted and adapted to what's all going on. And uh, anyway, each um, of their albums includes moments where you just feel him reach out and really just like squeeze your heart so hard that it aches with his lyrics and his real ability to turn a phrase. Um, they've attained this modern day status of a band like R.E.M. And in a sense, they're like uh, seemingly they're like at the epitome of this certain type of alt indie culture. Um, but anyway, that's fine. But, you know, if they're going to just keep creating this kind of beauty that's uh, on display here while maintaining integrity and compassion at the core, then, hey, I'm in. Are you? You should be. It's great. And you can get this on 180 gram black vinyl or pink vinyl. And the way to distinguish that is the little sticker here will tell you that this one is pink vinyl and the black it still has a pink sticker but it just says that it's just the regular vinyl okay so that's uh that's one of my picks for you my second pick for you this week is the beths and uh, this is expert in a dying field and this is through car park records and uh, on the Beth's new album here, um, Elizabeth Stokes, uh, her songwriting uh, positions her somewhere between, you know, being kind of like a, a novelist and a documentarian. The songs collected here are very autobiographical, and they're also character sketches of relationships and, most importantly, the aftermath of relationships. Um, the question that hangs in the air is, what do you do with how intimately versed you've become in a person once they're gone from your life? It's a, it's a real um, interesting exploration of that theme, which uh, it really works here. So the third LP from this New Zealand quartet, it houses 12 jewels of tight, heavy guitar or guitar heavy, I should say, songs that uh, kind of just work their way into your head. It's a, it's a collision of power pop and, and scuzz guitar. And uh, anyway, this is on um, canary yellow vinyl, but you can also get the cassette and it is in the orange shell, okay? So those are my two picks for you. They're both excellent choices um, and uh, really happy with both of those. So let's get to it. Um, with uh, some of the other stuff. All right, so this is Aaliyah, I Care For You. This is through Black Ground Records, and um, I Care For You, first posthumous compilation album by Aaliyah, who they call the Princess of R&B. So following her uh, tragic and untimely passing, they decided uh, Black Ground Records released a posthumous record, including songs from her studio albums and previously unreleased tracks and demos as well as uh, hit singles and recordings that ultimately didn't land on any previous albums. But the compilation album was a commercial success. 
and it debuted at number three on the Billboard 200 with certified platinum and it uh, features the previously unreleased Miss You. But anyway, now it's the first time on vinyl, two LPs, black vinyl, and uh, that's, um, they've been, you know, kind of releasing, I think we had a couple the other week, Aaliyah Records, so they've been just, you know, going through and releasing her catalog. This one is Aaliyah called Ultimate Aaliyah also through Black Ground Records. Uh, it's the second and final compilation album by this legendary R&B singer, originally released by Black Ground Records in the UK, Australia, and Japan, and only available on CD. Um, the 2005 compilation features three discs of Aaliyah's greatest hits and material from soundtracks and features work with label mate Timbaland. This is the first time that this compilation is available on vinyl. It's three LPs, and that's here for you now, too. Okay, as if you didn't get enough last week with the greatest hits, here we go again. Rick Astley, Whenever You Need Somebody 2022 is out. This is through BMG Rights Management UK Limited. Uh, so it's a worldwide smash hit debut album for Rick Astley. Uh, this one marks the, th 2022 marks the 35th anniversary of this multi-platinum selling album uh, that topped the charts in many countries. And um, this is an album that has defined a generation of 80s pop music. Um, you know, this was kind of helmed by the legendary songwriting trio of uh, Stock Aiken and Waterman. They did a lot of stuff for Kylie Minogue and kind of just everybody that was a pop singer making hits in the early 80s, especially pretty much Stock Aiken and Waterman was behind it if they were successful. This was remastered at Abbey Road. And uh, this album is the one that gifted the world with the uh, single uh, Never Gonna Give You Up and plus hit singles Together Forever, the title track whenever you need somebody, and Rick's cover of the Nat King Cole classic, When I Fall in Love. So maybe after this week, it'll be the end of it. Okay. <laughs> this is a really cool thing. I could have almost had this as a pick this week. This is um, Aziz and Friends. It's Waves of Peace, and this is on Morning Trip. Um, this is from 1982. This is an album of very gentle reflection. The sound of the ocean waves permeates every track on this record. Um, sitar, tambura, synthesizer, and bamboo flute are among the instruments that Aziz and friends use to conjure their blissful oceanic meditation here. Um, he, Aziz, reminisces that Waves of Peace was born in the beautiful oceanside town of Santa Cruz, California, just up the road there. So uh, that's kind of why I, it sort of caught my eye to, to take a listen to, you know, just because Santa Cruz is pretty much right here. Um, so he was living there in 1982. It was the first time he had ever lived so close to the ocean and he could walk down to the beach on a daily basis. Nature's always been a major source of inspiration for him. So um, drawing from that and the nearby ocean and the growing popularity of new age music, um, he produced this Waves of Peace. It was his first album to combine instrumental music and the sounds of nature. Released on vinyl for the first time since its original 1982 cassette release, it's two LPs. And they probably should have put it on some kind of oceanic marble blue vinyl, but it's black. That's okay though, we don't mind black vinyl, we love it. Okay, then next we have Skunk Baxter, Speed of Heat. This is through BMG Rights Management US. And this is the debut solo record from the legendary guitarist, uh, Jeff Skunk Baxter, who did work with uh, Steely Dan and the Doobie Brothers for you know long stints with both of those bands, drawing inspiration um, here from uh, the great musicianship all of just you know other session players this guy you know he, on many sessions and the people playing with him on this record also you know that's that's what they're so great at that's why the musicianship on this is so tight um all around um the session musicians uh, fellow, fellow Steely Dan and Doobie alum Michael McDonald makes a cameo appearance on this with him. There's great sound production. Few numbers um, from Steely Dan catalog are thrown in here for good measure. And the original chord recordings of which uh, Baxter was an integral part of. So above all, the guitar mastery is there. It's smooth, searing, very much a force. Um, it's anyway, this is a worthy add to anybody's collection who is, uh, you know, likes that, uh, you know, just heavy guitar hero kind of stuff. There you go. 
All right, then we have the Black Angels, Wilderness of Mirrors, and this is on Partisan Records. Um, it's been almost 20 years since the Black Angels ignited a psychedelic revival in prolific um, Austin, Texas, um, the, in that music scene. Drawing inspiration from the Velvet Underground, they have released relatively few of their own albums in their 18-year career, um, this new Wilderness of Mirrors being only their sixth album, um, coming after a silence of five years. So inevitably, uh, it's uh, inspired by over insanity that shook the world in the last few years. Um, Wilderness of Mirrors truly likes, it's like a huge step forward for this band, um, their approach to music. It's loosening the tight grip of their mind altering sonic palette and it's always packed with fuzzed out guitars and layers of echoing instruments. Um, but anyway, they haven't lost their signature vibe, but this time they allow for stripped down songs to enter the, the track list here. So um, it's a glorious comeback for a band who've, who's really shaped a contemporary take on the past sound, but that doesn't feel outdated, okay? So this is on Ocean Blue, um, an opaque red vinyl. Um, I think one disc is blue and one is red, it's a double. So that also, if you're interested, comes on cassette. Okay, then we have Blood Incantation, Time Wave Zero. This is through Century Media. Um, this is a new EP, uh, a cosmic, cinematic, dark, epic, uh, analog psychedelia. Um, it will appeal to people that are fans of Tangerine Dream, Purple Va, and Dead Can Dance. You're going to like this one, too. Okay, then we have uh, Ian Carr, Nucleus. This is a Labyrinth. This is with B with Records is the label. Uh, it's a dark, brooding, beat-heavy, melancholic mood music courtesy of Ian Carr and the Nucleus crew. Um, it's a favorite of Mad Lib, um, and it was released originally on the Vertigo label in 1973. Um, Labyrinth was never repressed, and of course those original copies are now very tricky to score. But like all the Nucleus records, it's aged ridiculously well. And uh, this uh, Be With Records release reissue here is remastered from the original analog tapes. Shows off just why they uh, deserve to be back in press, okay? This is Clutch, um, Sunrise on Slaughter Beach. This is Weathermaker Music, uh, the 13th studio album by American rock band Clutch. Uh, it's released through the band's own Weathermaker Music label. It's their first studio album since Book of Bad Decisions, making it one of the longest gaps between albums for them. Uh, Sunrise on Slaughter Beach is unlikely to uh, retrospectively rank among their better albums, the best ones, but it's a very strong effort nonetheless. It should really please a vast majority of their fan base. Um, this, they're calling it magenta vinyl, but it really looks more like that orchid purple color. I feel like magenta's got a lot more red in it and it's much more uh, vibrant. This is like that purple orchid kind of color. All right, just, you know, just to let you know. All right, this is Miles Davis, The Bootleg Series, Volume 7, That's What Happened, 1982 to 1985 on Legacy Recordings. Now, uh, that's what happened, Bootleg Volume 7. It's the next installment in the celebrated award-winning archival series that began in 2011, uh, shining an in-depth light into different areas of the legendary career of Miles Davis. Um, in the 1980s, popular music had moved to a smoother electronic-based sound and that traded uh, the steam for previous years for subdued arrangements, and it meant to elicit peace and deep reflection. Miles Davis embraced this era um, and his pulling inspiration from FM radio and MTV, and he was searching for the next frontier, letting his creativity really roam. Um, this music on the Bootleg Series Volume 7, it captures the exploration and finds Miles beginning to reemerge as an, in a creative landscape far different from the one that he left um, in 1975. So he's touched every inch of pop culture while keeping true to his vision of jazz. And uh, that's what uh, what's supposed to be. Art is supposed to be like that, bend and flow and mutate into something else. So, you know, he, he, uh, he got the memo. He definitely understood the assignment. Um, this double LP collects highlights of bootleg volume seven with over 80 minutes of unreleased studio material from 1982 to 1985. It's on white vinyl and uh, wow, great. I love that photo too. It's just fantastic. 
And another Miles oh. Davis for us. This one is a reissue of You're Under Arrest on the Get On Down label. Um, so this is a 1985 album recorded by Miles and it was presenting a mixture of pop covers um, orig and original material dealing with politics, racism, pollution and war. Gosh, it just sounds really familiar, like, you know, present day almost, right? <clears throat> so You're Under Arrest has some surprisingly new look at pop tunes by Michael Jackson and Cyndi Lauper and also re uh, features the return of uh, John McLaughlin on guitar and a guest performance from Sting, which is, you know, pretty interesting. So anyway, this one has the OB. This is not Japanese vinyl, but it's like just for the the reissue, I think that they uh, slicked it up with that. It's it's on clear vinyl too, okay? Then we have uh, Ella Fitzgerald, Ellie and, <laughs> Ellie, Ella and Louie again. This is from the Verve Acoustic Sound Series and uh, on the Verve label. Uh, the duo that critics have called a match made in heaven uh, are in their peak. Uh, their, uh, their form is, uh, the, this is the sequel to their 1956 debut. Ella's voice is very warm and sweet as honey, and Louie, um, his uh, gravelly kind of uh, sound kind of formed this uh, sound built for commercial success with, with these two together. Um, Ella and Louie, again, is a key element of what could be considered the most iconic jazz duo of all time. Verve Acoustic Sound Series features transfers from analog tapes and remastered on 180 gram vinyl in deluxe gatefold packaging. And uh, yeah, it's, it's heavy, so very nice. All right, this is Fletcher, Girl of My Dreams, and this is on Capitol. And this is an up close look at moments of heartache and triumph uh, and deeply transformative experiences on Fletcher's way to self-discovery. The new record expands on the boldly detailed storytelling that she's brought to hits like Undrunk and Bitter. Um, this time around, it reveals her inner world more fully and fearlessly than ever before, embracing the kind of uninhibited honesty that's freeing for both the artist and the audience. So just a little warning for you, this one is one of the uh, explicit lyrics ones, okay? Not that you guys care, but you never know when people are trying to get stuff for their kids. So they, they should be warned about that in advance. This is Goth Babe, <coughs> and it's self-titled. It's on the Dual Tone Music Group. Um, this uh, goth, is, um, goth Babe is Griff Washburn, and that he's here enjoying himself. He's originally from Tennessee. He currently lives in a tiny house with his pup, Sadie, who I'm assuming that's Sadie there. Um, in the mountains of Washington. And uh, when not on the road, he and Sadie are off enjoying the outdoors of the great Pacific Northwest, uh, snow, surf, and trails, and plenty to occupy them off season. Uh, he seems to have picked up on the brighter parts of life, uh, parting ways with social status and relevance. Um, he's discovered how wonderful living day to day is. You know, good for him, right? So making music to him is less a climb to the top as it is a form of free thinking and enjoyment. So it, uh, Goth Bay blends sun-bleached indie rock with blistering chill wave, kind of evokes uh, scenic locations that stretch along the West Coast and beyond. So this they put on cobalt and clear ghostly vinyl, and it's got a download with it. Okay, then there is, I don't have one to show you, but um, I just want to make you aware there's a Vince Guaraldi trio, Charlie Bound Christmas through Craft Recordings out today with, uh, you know, these iconic uh, tracks like Christmas Time is Here, Linus and Lucy, that kind of stuff. And uh, they've got it on this uh, embossed kind of gold foil cover. Um, it'll be, you know, on the list below. I just don't have one here to show you, but uh, just making you aware that that's out. Okay. Guar has a new album. This is the new Dark Ages, and this is on Pit Records. Um, this album concept is tied to a companion graphic novel, um, Guar and the Duoverse of Absurdity, uh, in which the band are sucked off into an alternate... Al <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, into an alternate universe to do battle with their evil twins and... <laughs> The specter of rogue technology. All right. The songs on this album are packed full of twists and turns, and the band combine a multitude of different styles of punk, thrash, groove metal, and doom elements. 
a, a twist of sci-fi and catchy and fun vibe on this one. Um, they, it's a very entertaining experience. And Guar always, you got to take them like with a pinch of salt. That's just who they are. Anyway, this is on black and gold marble vinyl. Then we have Jack Harlow, Come Home, The Kids Miss You on the Atlantic label. Now, it doesn't tell much of a story. This album is about, you know, it's just not, it's very lukewarm, this one. He has a voice that is so like, uh, like everyone else that it can sound vaguely like Drake if he's, if he breathes out of his mouth enough. And Drake is featured on one of the tracks, coincidentally, um, but this never really embodies any kind of identities. Um, this come on the kids miss you even with its glossy production um, and a big budget here for per, you know for that it's it's hollow record and it's just it's pretty empty um, I've seen like a lot of reviews of this and really I haven't seen really one that anybody thought it was really really great this guy had a lot of promise with his last record but um, wow um, this just um, a lot of times his interviews they um they really contradict who he is what you what you hear on records is not who he comes across as in interviews and i think that that's a big disconnect for people anyway it's on clear vinyl if you decide to try it it's um yeah, well there's a lot better out there all right this is jessica hoop order of romance on the memphis industries label um, she returns here with her sixth album, Order of Romance. It's a record that fortifies her position as one of the most striking and original voices in contemporary music. Um, it's uh, one of her most intricate and finely balanced albums, uh, you know, to date. Uh, she says she set out to mature as a writer and fully clarify her voice and her stance and through melody and phrases. And uh, it feels like every person, character, or artist I ever was over the many seasons of my life handed an instrument to play across the song. So, you know, she's just drawing from her entire career. Um, it all culminates here in her sixth release. So that's kind of cool. Um, let's see. She's got themes of empathy and friendship. They intertwine with clear eyed and moralistic poetry on subjects like gun control, religious and political cults and climate change. So this is what they're calling uh, red ripple vinyl. And uh, there you go, if you want to give that one a whirl. There's a 12 inch here from Jay Dilla. Um, BBE was a big single for Jay Dilla. There's four different mixes on this. So although his life was short, he is considered one of the most influential producers in hip hop music. Uh, his music raised the artific, artistic level of hip hop production in Detroit. And according to The Guardian, um, in the UK, his affinity for crafting lengthy melodic loops peppered with breakbeats and vocal samples took instrumental hip hop into a new, more musically complex realms. But anyway, this uh, 12 inch with its four mixes is here for you now. I think one side plays at 33 and one side plays at 45. Kind of an interesting uh, thing there. All right, now we have Jan and Dean, All Time Greatest Hits. This is on the Curb label. Uh, this is a LP pressing of the hits collection from this surf music dis, uh, duo. It's an 11 track budget priced collection that features some of their biggest hits. It's got things on here like Surf City, The Little Old Lady from Pasadena, Dead Man's Curb, Drag City, Barbara Ann, and Ride the Wild Surf. So there's probably, you know, uh, better, more... Um, Oh, I don't know, kind of quality uh, Jan and Dean collections. But this is a nice budget price one where you do get a lot of their their biggest uh, hits on there, okay? Then we have <clears throat> the Kinks, self-titled Kinks. Uh, it's on Sanctuary Records. Uh, so the Kinks had a single in, a number one single with You Really Got Me. So some guy came along and said that he better make some money out of these kids before it was too late and before their popularity faded um, like it had in uh, a lot of flavor of the month bands. 
And what he didn't understand was that the Kinks weren't flavors of the month. Ray Davies was an excellent songwriter at the age of 21, and his brother Dave was a great guitarist, and their band was more, much more than just a simple R&B band. So the explosive sound of the immortal track, You Really Got Me, should be enough to tell you that. But their cover versions of songs like Beautiful Delilah, which uh, kicks off the album, it's a great way to let you know that this um, is the sound of the British invasion, just be beginning and uh, uh, they're um, it's they really show some skills though there's some covers where they do just sound like a bunch of kids sort of singing some song but that's just because they were young and they weren't fully aware of what was going on with them yet but then you know that happened with the who as well but anyway you can get this now and it is mono and uh, so anyway uh, that's a nice piece for your collection if uh, if you're collecting uh, songs from that era or kinks stuff or you know you just like to hear the mono mix all right all right Julian Lage I hope I'm saying that name right L-A-G-E I'm saying Lage it just seems like or Lage I don't know uh, this is View with a Room and it's on Blue Note and uh, guitarist Julian Lodge discovers new orchestra orchestrational <laughs> possibilities on the follow-up to his acclaimed 2021 Blue Note album Squintby, um, expanding his trio with bassist George Roder and drummer Dave King with the addition of fellow guitarist and Blue Note label mate Bill Frizzell. Um, a View with a Room represents 10 compelling new original compositions by Lodge um, that explore a wide range of guitar sounds and textures and with these two distinctive master guitarists seamlessly blending their unique six string styles together. So that's nice for the, ja the jazz aficionado. This is also another uh, very cool thing that could have been a pick for me. This um, is Liars. They were wrong, so we drowned. Um, this is on the mute label. Um, they were wrong, so we drowned as the new installment from the Liars reissue series that's been going on, where every two months an album from the back catalog is released on limited edition recycled colored vinyl. On the recycled color vinyl and eco packaging with gatefold outer sleeve limited to a thousand copies worldwide. Originally released in 2004, Liar's second album scrutinizes pagan worship rituals in a punk lore fashion with its title alluding to the horrors and injustices of witch hunts. Uh, conducted throughout history. So each song is a page from a story that their frontman Angus Andrews crafted from his in-depth look into fairy tales and folklore. Um, it illustrates conflict between riches and like a sacred Christian's village. Um, they were wrong so we drowned was a creative transition and saw the band severing their ties with a scene that they inaugurated on their debut record um, and had decidedly outgrown by here their second LP. This is um, that recycled vinyl. It's kind of a maroon marbled color. Um, but uh, yeah, so so this one, like I said, I really like the liars and uh, this is this is kind of a very cool thing it's very limited too um there was another thing that is going to appear on the list ahead of the liars and that is lang lang the disney book um on deutsche gramophone now that one um it's like a bunch of songs from disney's iconic films that are reimagined by this uh one of the greatest living pianists around lang lang um it's a deluxe 2 LP. I don't have one here to show you, but it will be on the list down below in case you're wondering why we passed it by. It's just because I haven't got one to hand, okay? Then here's Lissy, Carving Canyons. This is on Lion Boy Records. Um, this one finds the acclaimed singer-songwriter digging deep and uh, to carry on through life's many uncertainties. The singer-songwriter's fifth album here is her most personal expression yet with 12 songs that chart the ripples caused by heartbreak and loneliness, as well as what happens when the soul perseveres amidst pain. This is on orange vinyl. And uh, that is kind of a theme too, broken hearts and what happens when everybody's gone. Um, this is the London Suede, believe it or not. They've got a new record out called Auto Fiction. This is through BMG Rights Management UK. Ninth full-length studio release for the Britpop, uh, Britpop alternative rock band Suede, but here in America they're known as the London Suede, <coughs> and this is said to be their punk record. All right, the album has everything you expect from Suede. It's got 
Brett Anderson's astonishing voice and those pulsing bass lines and violins and rangy and possible guitars and powerful drums, but it's also a more of a mainstream record than they've really made in years. Um, without losing what is wonderfully difficult about their music, they are bringing us what they are best at and offering something for people that are new to the band. Um, with their kind of DIY glam aesthetic and anti-macho attitude, uh, songs about urban decay, degenerate trash, and beautiful people. Um, Suede have always been punk in spirit, but now there's like a real snarl in their sound too. And that's not to say that they sound like the Sex Pistols or Minor Threat, but classic Suede with an attitude and urgency just turned way up. Now you can get this on black or on gray vinyl. This sticker here would just be the white one, but that is on the black. And then it's a little bit of an alternative alternative color uh, cover. See how they differ? This uh, one on the gray vinyl looks more like a negative and uh, the sticker there will tell you that it is on the gray vinyl. So that's the difference, okay? <coughs> now this is pretty exciting. The Mars Volta uh, are out with something called just the Mars Volta and this is on the Clouds Hill label. Um, the Mars Volta reawakened from their lengthy hiatus. Uh, formed by guitarist, composer Omar Rodriguez Lopez and singer-lyricist Cedric Bixler Zavala, the Mars Volta rose from the ashes of El Paso punk rock firebrands at the drive-in in 2001. On a mission to honor our roots and honor our dead, the Mars Volta made music that fused the Latin sounds Rodriguez Lopez was raised on with the punk and underground noise he and Bixler Zavala had immersed themselves in for years um, and futuristic visions that they were tapping into. So the album that followed, the albums that followed were one of a kind masterpieces and their songs of breathtaking complexity, also possessing powerful emotional immediacy. So after they fell silent, uh, a legion of devotees, um, including, believe it or not, Kanye West, they kind of kept up uh, a real um, incessant, uh, you know, request for them to return. So now a year after La Realidad de los Suenos, is, that was the luxurious 18 LP box set compiling their back catalog, sold out its 5,000 print run in under 24 hours. Now, the duo are back and accompanied this time by founder bassist Ava Gardner, drummer Willie Rodriguez Quinones, Quinones and keyboard player Mar Marcel Rodriguez Lopez. Boy, that's, that's a mouthful. Everybody's got double barreled names almost. Uh, the Mars Volta pulse with subtle brilliance, Caribbean rhythms and underpinning sophisticated turbulent song craft. This is the Mars Volta at their most mature, most concise and most focused. Uh, it's for them. I think this is a very low key cover because normally their stuff is so colorful and interesting and all this stuff going on. So this is very uh, pared down, but their sound and uh, fury channeled to greatest effect on here. Um, subterranean pop melodies and uh, dark sci-fi tales of the occult and malevolent governments uh, distilling all that passion and poetry and power at their fingertips here. The Mars Volta is their most accessible music that they've ever recorded. Here for you now. You know, Mars Volta are like that too. Uh, up to, leading up to this, I really didn't realize that they were kind of getting ready to release anything and then there it is. They kind of do that a lot, it's funny. Um, <clears throat> another one on the list that is uh, not here to hand for me is gonna be More Kicks. That's called Punch Drunk on Dirt Nap Records, the second album from that London-based trio. It's out. And then also the Murlocs Manic C. Um, that's on ATO. And uh, that was like um, formed in late 2010 by harmonica player Ambrose Kel Kenny Smith's Australia's The Murlocs, they play their own blown out, distorted brand of soulful R&B. Um, you know, that's got uh, an all-star lineup, including Ambrose Kenny Smith from King Gizzard and Cook, Cook Craig from King Gizzard. Uh, you know, just a, a nice uh, list of guests on there too. 
Anyway, I don't have that to show you. It is out and it's on like this orange neon tangerine galaxy vinyl. But um, yeah, sometimes when uh, I'm just trying to get this recorded for you, I don't always have everything in my hands. So that's one of those. But I thought I should mention it since it's on the list below. All right, this is No Age, People Helping People. This is through Drag City. Uh, so No Age's ethos sings to us from beyond the clouds with words and without. Their concepts uh, are there to boost everyone, helping everyone. They like that idea of just this utopian kind of existence. So ensconced in Randy's garage, Dean and Randy have come composted <laughs> drums and guitar and life on planet earth into a stream of miniatures vignettes and re-embodied images as an infinity of hits so uh i'm surprised that's not on colored vinyl it looks like the type of thing that would be but nope black okay mm -hmm. this is nucleus alley cat label is uh be with records it's yet another thrilling funky prog Jazzy Rock Fusion Beauty from Ian Carr's Nucleus. This was originally released on the Vertigo label in 1975. Alley Cat was never repressed, and of course, those original copies are also now very tricky to score. Uh, Reimagined from the original analog tapes, it shows why, uh, this is another one, shows you why they deserve to be back in press. They were the last Nucleus album recorded for the Vertigo label, released in 1975. And again, it was meticulously produced by John Heisman and is every bit as uh, sinuous and um, as anything that this group has recorded. As far as riff-laden accidental cop funk goes, uh, there's so much energy coursing through the music that at times it sounds like a live recording and it's pretty unbeatable. So that is here and I thought that might be a colored vinyl too, but it is not. All right, this one, I feel like we've talked about these guys before. And maybe we have, and this is just the limited edition colored vinyl, which is why it's new release. But this is Pepper, Kona Town on Volcom. Uh, there certainly isn't, uh, they're not the first Hawaiian band to blend alternative rock, punk, and reggae, but they're, uh, they're this Hawaiian trio. Um, the, it isn't groundbreaking. It's definitely above average, but also very quite likable musically. It sounds like Sublime. Uh, there's no deviation from the reggae ska punk mix of uh, that Sublime did. Uh, lyrics that don't get much deeper than parties and girls, okay? And the production on the album is really good, but that should be expected. I use three separate producers who've worked with Blink-182, Sublime, Snoop Doggy Dog, and Death Row Records. This comes on yellow vinyl, and it's here for you now. Yeah, do you guys remember us talking about Pepper before? It really seems to me like we did. Um, let's see here. Oh, just so you know, I forgot to tell you, Guar comes on cassette, and um, the No Age comes on cassette as well. All right. Uh, now, this is Pink Floyd, Animals 2018 remix album. Uh, on Pink Floyd Records. This is interesting because nothing is easy when it comes to Pink Floyd and its legacy. That would explain why the 2018 remix, of, remix here of the band's 1977 release, Animals, is just now seeing the light of day. Um, lead guitarist David Gilmore wouldn't sign off on the liner notes, according to uh, uh, Pink Floyd's songwriter and co-lead singer Roger Waters, um, who agreed to letting the remix out without any notes. Can you imagine these guys sitting and squabbling about liner notes? I mean, really? There has to be like some uh, incredible ego about that. Like to be fighting over that kind of crap for, for years just to get this that out. I mean, and then they have to decide, okay, we just won't do the notes because Dave Gilmore won't sign off on it. I, I don't know. There's just like, you know, you guys got to find something better to do. So anyway, your fans are left with the music now in 5.1 surround sound for the first time. Newly imagined cover, a 32 page booklet with previously unreleased photos, but none of the backstory. Uh, there are also no bonus tracks or previously unreleased songs. Floyd Fanatics, of which they are legions, will certainly uh, be able to hear nuances in the new mixes and it will go right past the first time listener for sure. Um, at the very least, it provides an excuse for those who haven't listened to Animals in years to uh, give, it, give the new version a spin. I love that they put this out, but like I said, when I just 
read why it's been delayed for so long, it just seems so petty. Um, maybe Dave Gilmore didn't think he was being portrayed well in the liner notes. I don't know what, but oh my God. <laughs> Jonathan Richmond and the Modern Lovers, Rock and Roll with the Modern Lovers. This is on the Omnivore Recordings label. Um, uh, Jonathan Richmond is a, a native of Boston, and he became so enamored with the Velvet Underground that he moved to New York in 1969, becoming personally acquainted with his idols, and he once even opened for them. Yet he failed to make it as a musician in the Big Apple, so um, returning home, he established the modern lovers that he modeled after the Velvets. However, just as they were signed to Warner Brothers, musical differences led to a premature split. So. Their demo recordings, released in 76, um, served as a great influence to the emergence of punk rock bands on both sides of the Atlantic. Now, while Richmond became focused on producing a much mellower sound, this became evident with this album, with Richmond fronting a new formation of the Modern Lovers, mixing like traditional folk songs. You can kind of tell, he's, you know, they're using an upright bass here and uh, acoustic guitar. Um, they've done traditional folk songs, covers of Jamaican music, and his own kind of uh, out of left feels, very jaunty compositions, you know, almost silly at times, but um, it left his audiences very perplexed with what kind of a future musical direction he was going to take. Um, so this album contains a, like a rock and roll version of the wheels on the bus, you know, it's just too quirky, it's too um, very weird, an instrumentation, an instrumental version of a, of a track by a Jamaican musician, uh, Earl Zero is on here. It's diverse, it's an, it's an interesting, li um, interesting listening experience, it's on red vinyl, but I feel like Jonathan Richmond later just became an acquired taste and he's really not for everyone, but um, it's here for you now if you're interested, okay. Now we've got uh, the soundtrack to The Lost Boys. This is on Friday Music. Joel Schumacher's 1987 film uh, really capitalized on like slick MTV. I mean, this movie almost plays out as like a, a MTV videos at the time. Um, the soundtrack, it's, it's a bit of a, uh, well, it's kind of a hot mess because it just doesn't flow. It's, it's a real weird record, but you know, a lot of people are nostalgic because I think it came out in 1987 and a lot of people were growing up and they loved this movie and it was uh, all that. The, the Echo and the Bunnymen, they turn in a very excellent cover of The Doors, People Are Strange on this. But uh, anyway, it's on silver metallic vinyl and uh, available now. This uh, here is, um, whoops. Rick Springfield, Working Class Dog. This is the 40th anniversary special live edition of this one. It's on Songvest Records. Now, in April of 2021, 13 months into quarantine, Rick Springfield and his band performed his most iconic album, Working Class Dog, from start to finish at Rick's home in Malibu in celebration of its 40th anniversary. So anyway, the result is a work here of renewed interpretation of this classic album. And uh, I think this had the hits like Jesse's Girl is on here and um i don't know i've done everything for you is on here too so a couple of really big singles for him and uh that album was a huge seller but it's just an interesting take on that and something new all right this is yuma sumac the high ink and high priestess on the naked lunch label um so-called nightingale of the andes uh this is a necessary introduction into the life and music of the one and only yuma sumac she's a peruvian singer who startled audiences in the united states and europe with her remarkable voice and beauty and mysterious inca princess priestess persona um bridging the gap from folklore to exotica um she was the former forerunner of like this new philosophy and uh, this is like quite a nice Quite a nice record now, too. Okay. Then we have uh, Supergrass. This is on Echo, and this is a special reissue of their self-titled third album. It extends a collection of unheard demos, b-sides, rare live tracks, and remixes, and this is on the neon orange vinyl. I think you can get this on black, but I think we only brought it in on the colored vinyl. Um, and now we have Tortoise, TNT, on Thrill Jockey. Now, um, with TNT, Tortoise had created its most expansive album to date, harnessing a relatively new digital recording technology to craft ambitious tracks 
that really deftly fused the band's uh, various influences, leading many writers to simply label it post-rock. Um, it was released in 1998. Um, uh, the record solidified Tortoise as musical innovators and with chops to mash up to ambient electronics, jazz rhythms, cascading marimba melodies and the like. Even two decades after its release, you'd be hard pressed to find that sounds anything, you'd, you wouldn't find anything that sounds like them. They're unique and interesting and uh, they're calling this, um, it's on jalapeno green vinyl, two LPs and here. Okay, guys, we are right at the 45 minute mark. So thank you for hanging in there with me. Hope you found something that you like and uh, I'll post that list down below. Have a great weekend and I will see you next time. Thank you.